Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new live webinar hosted by the Fawe Enterprise Support Community. Uh, my name is Elena. I'm your host today. Uh, if you are new to our webinars, just a few quick mentions from my side. First of all, please know that the microphones will be muted during the live session. Uh, this is in order to uh, obviously prevent any uh, noise, uh, any interruption. So if you have any questions for our host today, you can please use the chat option. Uh, and we will also have a live uh, Q&A session. Um, and uh, then you'll be able to use the raise hand option and uh, share your questions if you have any. So please, uh, please know that this is why your microphone is muted. Um, you can always ask your questions in the chat. Uh, our host today will uh, also check the chat from time to time and he will try to answer all your questions. In case any question uh, gets unanswered or if you have any questions after the live session, you can, of course, uh, ask your questions in the community. Uh, also, another important mention is that uh, if you are new uh, to our community or if you are not even familiar with the community, uh, please know that uh, this is uh, the link to our community. Um, if you don't have an account, please register now. Uh, we have some activities with rewards and you can only participate if you have uh, an account. Uh, the Huawei Enterprise Support Community is uh, the official technical community for all Huawei Enterprise products, solutions and certifications. Uh, this is already a very big community. We welcome you. Uh, please join us if you think that it could be helpful. It might help you in your day-to-day -day work. It might help you in your career. It might help you in your professional growth. Or uh, if you are preparing for a Huawei certification, uh, this is definitely the place for you. Uh, we have an extensive knowledge base that you can learn from. We have uh, technical webinars like this one today. Uh, and we also provide free technical support for, for all issues related to Huawei Enterprise uh, products and uh, solutions. And the reply rate, uh, the solution uh, will be provided within uh, 24 hours. Uh, we also have a public recognition system uh, and reward system. You can join the Elite Users Program if you feel that you could have a more valuable uh, contribution to our community. For example, our host today is one of our elite users. He is an MVE, but now he also has the webinar host role. This is a new role for him, and I thank him for taking this role as well. And um, last but not least, please know that we have monthly activities uh, where we offer different rewards. Um, so if you are interested in joining the community, please uh, join us uh, right now. Um, as you already know, the topic for today is uh, Packet Transport Network. Uh, this webinar is uh, intermediate level. Uh, from now on, we will, uh, we will uh, announce... Uh, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I think it's from the internet. Can you hear me better now? Okay, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks guys for letting me know. Um, okay, so I'm not sure if it was clear or not. I was saying that uh, for this topic today, packet transport network, we will have intermediate level. Uh, we will announce the level uh, of each webinar in advance because uh, in the surveys, uh, I saw that some of you told us that maybe some of the topics are too easy, too, uh, not uh, detailed enough. Uh, of course, it depends on each person's uh, technical level, which is why we will announce the level for, the level for, which, uh, for each webinar at the beginning. Uh, if it's too easy for you, maybe you'll join an intermediate or advanced level webinar. Uh, okay, so um, now I would like to uh, invite our host today to uh, share a few words about himself. 
Uh, his name is Dost Muhammad. As I said, he's an elite user. And before we start the presentation, I want to thank you, Dost, for accepting this new challenge. Uh, I know that being a webinar host is a challenging role, but uh, I appreciate you uh, taking this role and I'm sure you're gonna do a great job. So thank you and uh, let's have an amazing webinar today. Uh, let me unmute, okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Irina, uh, thank you Good. everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, I'm happy that we have a lot of uh, friends from different regions. Uh, first of all, uh, my name is Dost Muhammad. Uh, I have 15 years of experience in optical network transmission technologies. Uh, my education is engineering along with the management degree. Uh, I have a couple of certification from Huawei in transmission technologies uh, and also in the data camp field. Uh, and also in sales. Uh, I have experience with uh, different companies uh, in Pakistan and nowadays I'm working in Middle East. Uh, I'm also part-time trainer for Huawei uh, corporate trainings and also for HCIA and HCIP transmission. Uh, so it will be a nice session with all of you guys. Uh, in this webinar, uh, I chose uh, the topic is MPLSTP, multi-protocol label switching, a uh, transport platform. Uh, the original one was MPLS, which is now modified into the uh, transport profile with addition of some new features and discarding of some things of the old MPLS fine. Mm -hmm. So I will discuss brief about uh, theoretical knowledge of uh, this technology. Uh, then we will come to Huawei product. Uh, Huawei have a series of uh, packet transport network product, uh, which is named as uh, the series is PTN. Uh, I choose one of the product, uh, latest one from Huawei, which is used by different uh, enterprises uh, across the globe. Uh, it is PTN 990E. Uh, the series name is 900. Uh, then I pick some uh, snaps of configuration and uh, practical orientation, how the network will be constructed using this product. Uh, so we will also check uh, some snaps and we will discuss it from the uh, NCE point of view, the NMS point of view, fine. Okay, what will be included? Uh, there will be a lecture. Uh, of course, it is uh, totally lecture based, but I will show you some uh, lab overview. Uh, this is just a snapshot that will illustrate the network connectivity, one simple network connectivity, along with how you will configure the services. And we will discuss uh, different aspects of the practical network. Uh, there will be question from you. Uh, and also later you can post question on this webinar. Uh, later I will uh, also be able to uh, give detailed answer for it. Okay, uh, the content I will present it uh, is what is MPLSTP, what is this technology about and why we are using this. Uh, then we will go into the background of MPLS uh, because this MPLS TP is using the existing architecture of pseudo wire of MPLS. Uh, then we will discuss some features and architecture of MPLS TP, how it is different from other technology. Uh, of course, it is a uh, data transmission technology, uh, but we will see what is the actual features and why it is important. Uh, then we will see the protocol state uh, overview of MPLS tunnel and so do I. Uh, this technology is based on tunneling uh, and the service is based on so do I, so we will discuss it. We will discuss the ONM, MPLS TP have the enhanced ONM as compared to MPLS and it is supporting protection mechanism and restoration. So we will discuss it. Uh, then there will be introduction to the product of Huawei 990E. 
we will see what will be the key parameter in the actual uh, network applications and uh, what will be the actual network look like and we will see some uh, overview from the nce for this product so overall this webinar will give you uh, a highlight of this technology and also the practical network construction uh, of course this is very uh, detailed technology uh, but i will give you very brief concept which will help the uh, all of you who are new to this technology and also uh, it will be uh, help the existing one who knows this technology it will enhance your knowledge okay okay so our first topic is uh, M regarding the mpls tp basically it is defined by ietf and itut uh, it is based on labels label switching uh, ITUT is define the requirements of this transport technology and IETF is standardizing the protocol defining it and go to it uh, and keep it at the maturity level. So uh, basically two bodies is involved in its standardization and its definition from start. Uh, this is basically based on the existing MPLS. Uh, the switching is and forwarding is based on MPLS. Fine. Uh, and it, what, uh, what is the label? Label is basically uh, short and fixed length as compared to IP. Uh, and it is easy to handle by the equipments and it enhance the route, uh, routing speed, or you can say the forwarding speed of data, uh, where there is uh, delay sensitive to traffic and overall a lot of, okay. So uh, my voice is clear to everybody. Can you, anyone just feedback in the chat? Okay, okay, thank you. So uh, we have different technology from start, like we have uh, PDH, then we move to the SDH technology for transmission, then we go to the Ethernet or SDH. We have WDM system, which is no enhanced OTN system. Uh, and also we have IP data transport. Uh, so what is the difference here? Uh, let's suppose in, in relation with the IP network, what is the advantage here? It improves the packet forwarding because it is based on labels. The label is short and easy to handle by the equipment. The processing is short. Then we have predictable traffic path. Uh, like we will have predefined path for working route and the protection route. And it enhance and it ensure, okay, your traffic is guaranteed uh, other than uh, like in IP services, IP data transmission, it is usually the forwarding is based on different protocols. In term of SDH, uh, in SDH we have uh, TDM time slots configuration and we are allocating static bandwidth to different services like E1, STM1. Uh, so if any of customer is not using uh, his time slot, it will be still dedicated for that. So there is better bandwidth utilization in MPLSTP because there is sharing bandwidth and it is packet based. Uh, and the MPLSTP support QoS of traffic. You can assign different priorities to different class of services, like uh, you can give high priority to signaling and low priority for let's suppose 4G or 5G. Uh, we have flexible protection switching, we have uh, pseudo wire level and tunnel level protection switching, uh, we have uh, multi station pseudo wire protection mechanism. So all of this make it good. Uh, then the SDH technology uh, and also we have rising packet transmission demand. Like everything is going for packet base, like our E node B, our 3G services, 4G services, and also corporate services is going to be packet base. Uh, so it is not easy for SDH to handle this requirement in terms of uh, high efficient resource utilizations uh, and bandwidth utilizations. 
because Ethernet or SDH is not so that much uh, improved, or you can say mature that protect services in case of any issue. Uh, okay, right. So this is brief about the uh, introduction of MPLSTP and its differentiation. Okay, now I'm going into the uh, background of MPLS. So here we can see uh, like in IP, we have a connectionless control and connectionless forwarding plan. Uh, and there, the other comparison is ATM where we have connection oriented control and forwarding plan. MPLS is in the middle, it's taking the connectionless control plan from IP and forwarding is connection oriented. We have predefined path for traffic forwarding. And it is multi-protocol, like uh, what it means, it support uh, different uh, layer services, uh, IPv4, IPv6, and internet work protocol exchange, which is from Xerox uh, vendor. This is a communication architecture. And we have SNA from IBM. They have their own data communication uh, architecture. So all these are supported by this MPLSTP. Uh, label switching add labels to the packet and replaces IP forwarding. Uh, like let's suppose it is uh, receiving IP traffic. So it will assign labels and replace the IP uh, forwarding. The forwarding in MPLS is based on labels. Uh, what here we have other uh, problem solution in MPLS. We have high network speed, scalability is easy. We have still QoS and traffic engineering. Uh, the traffic engineering, you can say like the, the user can control the uh, different path of traffic. You can configure it, you can reroute it. Other than it is based on some protocol and some protocol is calculating traffic paths and forwarding the packet. So, so here the user have different uh, rights to engineer the transmission path. Okay, this is the basic architecture of MPLS. Uh, like, let's suppose we have other MPLS device, like you can say this is some switches. It is connected with uh, the MPLS domain. So here we have label switching router and label edge router. This router, you basically, you can say is the MPLS node. It is not the router from uh, layer three. Uh, you can say it is layer 2.5 devices which can handle traffic at one side from the client. Then they add the payload in the pseudo wire, uh, and then pseudo wire is mapped into the tunnel and it is transported. So, what the, uh, the node which is connected with the client, uh, it is called as label edge router. Uh, this is the ingress, like it will take traffic from clients. And the middle one is label switch router. It will take the incoming label and map switch into the forwarding level. And we have one predefined path, uh, which is the LSP, or it is also called as our tunnel. So in the MPLS network, uh, we have MPLS node, which is taking a forwarding traffic based on labels and the intermediate node is just uh, switching the traffic based on labels and forwarding it to the next. At the egress site, at the last site, it will again strip the uh, MPLS labels and deliver the payload to the last device. Okay, uh, MPLS features, MPLS is basically connection oriented packet switching. Here we have the data are forwarding place is a connection oriented. We have predefined paths. MPLS label are used to exchange paths. You can uh, like you have one LSP, which is the tunnel, the path for the traffic and how you will establish the path based on labels and it will be predefined and it eliminate the IP complex function to go uh, for lookup and check. Fine. 
Uh, we have power transmission capabilities, like we have QoS quality of services. Uh, we have strong ONM. Uh, we have the control channel of ONM along with the data channel, which uh, ensure the, uh, you can say the services is working fine. And reliability, like we have predefined working and protection paths. So in case of any fiber break, the services will be shifted to the alternate protection path. Uh, in general, we can say like uh, MPLS TP is the enhanced version of MPLS with addition of ONM and it remove the IP connectionless forwarding plan. Like it remove its IP headers and its forwarding is not based on that. Uh, and it make uh, better in case of ONM uh, in comparison to MPLS, MPLS TP is enhanced. Like here you have predictable paths and you remove something like uh, PHP and ECMP and tunnel merging from MPLS uh, that make the forwarding is uh, uh, based on the predictable path. So my voice is still uh, fine with all of you. Anyone, anybody can feedback? Okay. Okay, uh, if it is fine from my side, if anybody has some issue, uh, please check your uh, speaker sitting. Okay, I'll rejoin again. Okay, uh, here we have architecture of MPLS TP. Uh, MPLS TP is uses the pseudo wire technology. Pseudo wire is basically a logical, uh, logical pipe for services. And we can carry in, encapsulate different type of services like existing TDM, you can say the E1 services, but the technology is different to encapsulate it. Uh, here we have management control, uh, data forwarding and ONM. Let me explain this. And MPLS TP usually like the Huawei product, we are not preferring to use control plan for label distribution and path finding. Usually we are using uh, management plan. We are configuring static channels, static tunnels, and then we have the uh, we have static channel pseudo wires and MPLS tunnels. Okay, okay. There is one question: uh, which features have been removed? The basic is uh, it is uh, ECMP, uh, it is PHP, and tunnel merging. These three main is removed from the MPLS when it is migrated to the MPLS TP. These three features make the, the forwarding like maybe you will, the MPLS will forward packets in diff, on different roads. Okay, some of the packets for some one services will be along one path and some will be through the other different path. So that make it like maybe the sequence will be disturbed up uh, and you cannot find, you cannot guarantee the sequence of packets. So all these three are remote in the MPLS TP. Uh, here the, if you are using control plan for LSP or uh, tunnel configuration, then we are using GMPLS uh, or you can say the ASON technology. The control plan is establishing the Tunnel and LSP automatically based on the OSPF, RSE, VP, and LDP. But in Huawei product, PTN product, we are using static tunnels, which are being configured through the NMS or management plan. Okay, uh, there is one question why we are going to MPLS TP technology? Uh, in terms of services, like uh, you can say efficient bandwidth utilization, okay, it can enhance your, like there is some answer like CapEx and OPEX will be easy 
and there is strong ONM for monitoring. Uh, like in SDH, we are using time slot. Fixed time slot is assigned, let's suppose, for any services. If that uh, service is not using that time slot, it will be still dedicated and we cannot use it for uh, other services. Okay, but in MPLSTP, the line side network interface card is packet based and you can configure CIR and PIR. You can assign different rates, you can guarantee some traffic and some will be based on uh, PIR, peak interface, uh, peak rates. Okay, so I will also uh, answer for some of the question in the end which are not related to uh, this slide spine. Okay, uh, here this is very uh, illustrative from practical point of view. Like uh, we have, uh, let's suppose, point to point two nodes like PTN1 and we have PTN2. So there will be physical fiber connections. And then we have this section layer, like this we call as also link layer. Uh, then we have LSP. Uh, then we have pseudo wires and we have local service. So first of all, this local service will be mapped into the pseudo wire packet as a payload. So the wire will encapsulate uh, different type of services based on GFP and then it will be mapped into the LSP forwarding to the or tunnel, adding tunnel IDs and labels. And then it will be forward to the line card and then physical fiber. So this is the generic uh, protocol architecture, how the services will be moving from, let's suppose station A to station B. It is based on the so the wire and then map to the LSP and link layer and then is the physical fiber. So basically convergence time for MPLSTP is within 50 millisecond for tunnel APS and so the wire APS, there is one question, okay. Okay, uh, here I'm explaining the MPLS tunnel. Tunnel is basically a logical pipe. It is the route defined from the NMS. And uh, here you can see it provides the logical pipe for pseudo wires. Okay, like you will have physical force connection between two sides and then next. And you will assign some parameters to the uh, physical interface of this uh, line board, right? Uh, but how you, we will configure services, first of all, after physical interface sitting is fine, then you will need to configure MPLS tunnel that is the logical pipe. Uh, it is the reserved path between two uh, nodes, MPLS nodes, fine. Uh, then it is the definition. Then is our definition for uh, pseudo wires. Okay, pseudo wire is basically uh, again it is the wire which is connecting the first and last node through the MPLS tunnel. Okay, and here we see uh, MPLS tunnel is the blue one. Fine. Uh, we have services from uh, customer, which is the link, which we call as attachment circuits. Uh, and then we have like these services will be going to the uh, emulation. It, this will be the emulation services. It will be going to the pseudo wires. Uh, pseudo wires will add pseudo wire ID, it's a label and control word. Control word will be using to ensure the sequence, logical sequence and timing of this traffic. And then it will go to the tunnel and tunnel will add its own labels for forwarding. 
Uh, so the wire can encapsulate uh, cells, which is like from LTM payload. It can be PDUs uh, or specific bit stream. So it can encapsulate, like practically speaking, it can encapsulate Ethernet, uh, ATM, it can encapsulate even CES services. Uh, then we have uh, packets are transmitted over MPLS network through pseudo wires. So, so the wire at the tunnel endpoint, including an allocation of uh, these IDs, this is basically function of pseudo wires. And we can implement so the wire related QoS, like you can assign some specific bandwidth to any sort of wires. Okay. And also we are adding control ward that is ensuring uh, sequence of this traffic. And we have ONM for sort of wires, which is monitoring the different alarms. Like if there is some fiber break, so different alarms will be generated if there is some issues. So it can trigger different alarms and we can see it, okay? So this is one application of pseudo wires. Like if we have ethernet services carried by pseudo wires, so what will be happen? The ethernet payload will be received at the tributary card at the client card. And that will be encapsulated in the uh, pseudo wires packet as a payload. And then it will be forwarded to the tunnel and then to the line card. Of course, we will use uh, some configuration at both ends. Okay. Uh, at PE, PE1, it will be encapsulated services into pseudo wires, adding labels, and forwarded to PE2. At uh, provider H2, the, it will be again de encapsulated, okay, and the payload will be handed over to the client side. Okay, then we have uh, ONM of the MPLS TP. We have very strong ONM, and here we can see we have different layers. We have physical connection between uh, different nodes. Here we can see this is the section layer. Then we have tunnels. It depends on your configuration, how you configure, how many nodes is involved. And then we have pseudo wire and we have service level. So we have a pseudo wire level ONM, we have a tunnel level, and we have physical port level ONM. Okay. And this ONM is help us in fault management, like, uh, okay, you can. Uh, observe the alarm based on this. Uh, we have fault locating, like we can loop back, we can use trace, okay, and we can monitor performance, like we can check the current status of the service. Uh, we can use different techniques like continuity check to whether the link is healthy or not. So this is the ONM, which is based on, uh, I am not going into the deep detail of this theory but we have control channel along with the service channel. And that control channel is taking this ONM for the MPLS and so do, uh, MPLS tunnel and so do Y. So basically MPLS tunnel is the LSP, it is label switch part, fine. We have protection mechanism in MPLS TP, broadly categorized as tunnel APS and so do Y APS. So the tunnel APS, if there is a working path have some issue like fiber break or it have some logical issue, some alarm or some, uh, let's suppose transmitter is faulty. Okay, so based on this, the tunnel will trigger the switching. It is based on physical link break or link level issues. Uh, then we will have traffic rerouting and switching to the protection path, like we are using one plus one and one into one. In one plus one, we will have traffic on both working and protection. Receiver will decide to, to take the traffic from working. And if there is some issue, it will trigger. And we have one into one, the traffic will be actual on only one path. If there is some problem, it will be switched to the protection path. So in Huawei devices, like it is suggestible uh, also overall 
and we are using one into one protection. Okay, and it will protect the overall tunnel level. Uh, like if you have different services, maybe let's suppose 10 services on one MPLS tunnel. So when MPLS tunnel will trigger switching, it will switch the background services automatically. Like that background services will not uh, detect anything. And each switching should be within 50 milliseconds. If it is not within 50 milliseconds, you can check your configurations. You can check different things, okay? And we have pseudo-wire APS. Uh, here we are protecting particular service, okay? Uh, it is again divided into two, one plus one and one into one. Let's suppose there is, even you can configure your services unprotected depend on your requirements or you can protect it. And you can protect it whether tunnel level or if your requirement is at pseudo wire level, it depends on different business requirements. Okay, uh, here I will introduce one product from Huawei, PTN9908. This product is uh, used at the access and aggregate layer. And we are using this usually in enterprises and also in carrier network for communicating. Like in enterprise, we are using also use it in the utility. Uh, I will give you one example. Let's suppose there is one power utility and they are using it for communication between different control stations. So they're using E1 services, CES, as a CES, and they are using ethernet services. It can be fast ethernet or it can be giga ethernet, it depends on it. So here we have, uh, this is the front look of this equipment. Okay, how many service slots? We have 14 slots for services, board. We have two cards at slot 15 and 16, uh, which is a CXP. CXP is basically the integrated board. It is uh, control plus cross connect plus clock uh, and cross connection module inside. And it is used in one plus one. If there is some issue at one card, so it will switch the traffic to the other one within 50 milliseconds. We have two power modules. We can uh, feed two different power sources. Uh, and this is the fan is on the right side. And we have slot capacity up to 100 GE, depend on your CXP cards. Okay, here like one question for fan inside, uh, this is basically fan box. So this fan box have inside four individual fans, okay? Uh, so there is a chance if let's suppose one of the inside module, one fan have some issue, the other will still work, like the three will be working, okay? But of course, if the complete box is faulty, so there will be high temperature, the equipment will give you indication uh, for board status and you need to uh, replace it, fine. Okay, uh, there is another question. How are, how are we optics equipment competitiveness in the market? Uh, I will not go into the detail, but this is basically the integrated product. Like uh, you, you have very small box with the very less capex and it is supporting multi services like CES services, ATM services, ethernet, uh, and it is supporting up to 100G line side. And it is supporting uh, not SDN, okay? Like there is another question. It is supporting Flix Ethernet. It is supporting uh, Elan services. It is supporting Elan and CES services. And also uh, nowadays multicast, which is the E3 services. So based on this functionality, like all functionality embedded in one box, uh, which is highly integrated and reliable product, okay?
Okay, uh, this is a network application of PTN9908. Uh, it is basically, this is general uh, application. Like we have base station, you, you can use directly connected your E node B with the ethernet port or E1 port of this PTN equipment. And it can be also used in the aggregate layers. So uh, you can use this as a access layer to connect directly uh, 3G and 2G BT BTS sites, or it can be some private users. Okay. I also highlight another application from different uh, aspects. This is one of the practical scenario, like you have one substation uh, in power utilities, and there you have different equipments, like this is a different equipment, CCTV, phone, radio, some of like CCTV will be directly connecting to the MPLSTP Ethernet port. Some will be connected locally to the LAN switch and then to the MPLSTP and then going to the remote site for controlling. Okay. So this is another uh, application of this product or you can say overall MPLSTP. Like backbone network, we are using DWDM. Okay. Okay, this slide you can say is the basic summary of this webinar. Here you can understand the practical aspect of the PTN network construction. Like point to point, we have two nodes, uh, PTN 990A. So you will connect network network interface card, like slot number seven, we have one board is EX4, port number one. Other side, we have also slot seven and port one and then we are using it. So you can use this small network as a one plus one services you can configure. And there will be client site, user interface. It can be GE, FE and E1, okay. And what are the important parameters here to look for? Or you can plan it. Uh, it should be network uh, node name, like here you can see. Then we have any ID. Okay, and we have LSR ID and then we have communication IP. So this LSR ID depend on you. Okay, it is not necessary that it should be start from one to nine, but you can use the, I cannot use like broadcast and looping uh, IPs. Okay, there is, guideline for assigning this LSR ID, but it should be unique and point to point for this one network should be uh, same subnet. Uh, communication IP we are using for network management. Okay, it is like using, uh, you can assign any command from your NMS or NCE to this equipment, to so this IP, but LSR ID will be using as a control uh, is a control channel will be used for control channel like tunnel and ISP. Okay. Uh, so all this uh, is the basic thing like PTN uh, node, uh, any ID, LSR ID and communication IP you need to plan and configure. And you should have line cards and tributary cards. Like here you have these uh, connections of these ports, fine. LSR ID further explain. Uh, it is used for communication and DCN for control plane. Like you should assign LSR IDs and it should be proper. Otherwise you cannot configure your tunnel properly. It will give you some errors. And if LSR ID is mismatched, it is not, I mean, it is not in the same subnet. So there will be again, some issue in the control chain. Any ID are used for communication. Okay, uh, and here you should uh, take care from operation point of view, like these addresses should be unique. Otherwise uh, it can create a problem for uh, management, okay? Uh, 
And once it is configured, LSR ID is configured and you configure some services, you cannot change after that. You need to remove the tunnels and then you can change it. Okay, we have practical network. Uh, I take this snapshot from MCE, like we, we explained here. Okay. So here we have this product connectivity and this is the front face. So here you can see the existing board. Okay, we have a CXPA card, power interface, we have fan modules uh, and we have line cards, EX4S and we have tributary card. Uh, even we can accommodate E1 card. So this MD1 is the E1 card. So this is the uh, layout of from the NMS from NCE. Okay, if you are going to create tunnel using Huawei NCE, so how you will configure it? You will go to service, the main menu. Then we have to choose create tunnel option. And then we need to select first and last node. Okay, like here we have two nodes only. And here you can see like we are configuring static, it is MPLS tunnel, uh, it is bi-directional and protection depends on you whether you are want to configure it as a protection free or you want protection, okay? Then there will be tunnel ID assigned automatically. You can also change it. Uh, you can configure PIR and CIR. Basically, this is the bandwidth assigned to this uh, tunnel, okay? So all this you can set these attributes and then apply the services. The services tunnel will be configured. Okay, and then we have E-line service. What is E-line service? E-line service, basically you can say it is a point-to-point -point service uh, for ethernet. And let's suppose here we have enterprise A communicating with enterprise A at the other side, B to B in different cities. So you can configure E-line service from enterprise A to A using E-line service and B to B. So of course you can use, uh, you will use different pseudo wires and you can use same tunnel or you can use uh, different tunnels, okay? So this is a point to point E-line service and how you can configure from NMS, again, go to service. Uh, then you can choose create PWE3 service. Okay, uh, and you can choose this E-line service based on your uh, NCE provisioning of your license and your capacity. So after create, going to PW services, you can set these attributes again, like service type is ethernet, service ID auto assign, or you can manually configure it. Service name should be E-line for E-line service. If it is E-line service, you can uh, change this and then you can if you want so do wire level protection you can define it from here okay and you need to choose uh, node ids and then you need to choose the client board board id like here you can see start 9 em 2 dash 2 is the port okay and other side node and it is the client port, all right? And then uh, of course there is also other parameters like you need it, uh, which VLAN ID you need to assign to this service or you want to not using any VLAN. But the general configuration method is going to service, create, so do wires and you can set this attribute based on your selections. For tunnels, so there is no limit for this node, okay? You can configure different tunnels. 
Um, but of course, there is uh, like labels you can use maybe up to uh, some extent. Okay, next is ELAN surveys. ELAN is basically point to multi point or point to uh, multi point to multi point. So here, there is there's suppose one scenario. Uh, at one side, let's suppose you are using uh, one node, you can use with different ports and remote, you have two different nodes. So the service will coming from uh, PE2 to PE3, uh, from PE2 and PE3 to PE1, okay? And at PE1, the service will be ELAN and you will add, so device from PE2 directions and so do wire for PE3 directions, okay? And you will choose this based on like which VLAN should be going to different direction. So how to configure a VLAN service? You are going to VPLS, uh, same service create, here you can choose uh, VPLS service, then create VPLS. Okay, so here the service name uh, is ELAN and network modding I'm using here is full mesh and service type is VPLS. Okay, and it is ELAN service. Again, you will need to choose like, even you can use this for two point to point service, but you will like uh, select ELAN and you can add different ports, like going to the VSI configuration. Uh, here you can see access interface list. And from this interface list, you can click and you can add different interfaces. Like you can add, at node 100, you can add two different ports. And at 200, you can add single or different ports, depend on you. Okay, so you can assign different ports and you can assign uh, different VLANs in different direction. But locally, the service will be connected from one side. Okay, third type is CES. Like if let's suppose my requirement is BTS and I need E1 service. So the service type will be CES. Okay, and it will be mapped into the MPLS. Okay, how you will configure? Again, going to the service, create. Uh, so sudo wire service, same like uh, ethernet e-line service, but here the service type should be CES. Okay, you can click it like protection free, but uh, client board will be of course different and it should support CES service. Like here it is uh, D3 card, okay, and D3 card. So this card is supporting you can see here it is supporting E1, E1 services, fine. Okay, so let's suppose uh, I, I just add one tip here. Let's suppose I configure this E1 service, then how I will know after this? Okay, first of all, you can browse the client. There will be option appear. And you can see this is my services going from slot one, MD1, and we have port number 25 at other side it is port number 18 and this is the path and here you can see it's sudo wire information and you can also check this service id is 344 okay it will be like each node will have service id for each service and it will be appear in the ina explorer options okay uh, okay i configure it and no i want let's suppose to check it from nce from my nms whether the service configuration is fine. So there is one option, go into the any explorer of any node. Okay, like this is one of the node, I chose this board. Then I chose PDH interface and I low back in low back from one side. So one of the remote side, I apply low back, right? 
And other side, I go to the same type of card where my services is drop, and I choose this PRBS test. And you can uh, check, okay, how many durations in seconds, and you can start this test. So after start this test, okay, uh, it will show you the status. If it is normal after look back from remote end, there will be internal sending of some bytes through ONM and it will be come back to the original node. And here you can see the status. If it is green, it means this is, the service is fine. If it is invalid or there is some bit error, so you need to check different options. Okay, now here I'm summarizing this, like uh, basically MPLSTP, I just uh, highlight some things. Uh, basically it is very deep topic if you go into the detail and of course it will take very, uh, you can say very long time from us. And also practically I just included some things that can help you, okay, just for understanding. If there is some question, like uh, some detail is required uh, you can post it on our community. The link is already there and I will answer for this, okay? And you can also ask questions now uh, because before I observe many questions, but some are related to our topic and some are, are different. So I will come back to the this question. Yes, um, I'm glad you mentioned it. Uh, you already answered many questions, so... Uh... What I want to point out, if you have any questions that are strictly related to the topic today, please uh, ask them now. Uh, and my uh, request, uh, not the request actually, uh, if you want to participate in our activity, uh, please know that we will select three uh, users who have asked the best questions that are related to the topic, of course and you can win 605 coins. So if you want to participate in the activity as well, uh, I will share the link again. I shared it a, a few times already, but let me share it again. So please, you can also share uh, your questions here in a comment. Uh, as I said, our host today is also a member of our community. He will also be able to check your comments there. So um, if uh, based on the topic today on the content that was presented today. You still have some questions uh, for him uh, now. Please uh, share them in the chat or uh, use the raise hand option and uh, let us know. Okay, so you have- uh, Okay. You uh, check? Okay, how to renew SDH network with MPLSTP. Uh, you can uh, migrate SDH into the MPLSTP, okay? So uh, here we can have option like uh, from Huawei also we have different products. Uh, like uh, there is, let's suppose one product OSN 550, which is supporting a hybrid platform, okay? MPLSTP plus uh, TDM cards. Uh, so you can use that product uh, for migration. It will accommodate your existing E1 and STM1 services. Okay. And of course, uh, it will be like, if you are trying to map the existing uh, STM services directly into the MPLSTP line site, so you can at maximum uh, map E1 service and STM services directly over the MPLSTP. But if there is, uh, let's suppose STM16 or something higher than this, so you need uh, initially hybrid platform and finally you can uh, migrate your services to the packet level, fine. Okay, thank you. Um... Is there any other important questions? Uh, are there any other important questions that you guys need to ask right now? Uh, or... Uh, okay, uh, okay, what are the feature of enhanced UNM? Uh, like enhanced UNM, we are using, uh, you know, uh, like uh, we are using GAL GAL, okay? Generic alert label, and we are using uh, generic associated channels. Uh, 
this enhanced ONM better uh, help us, uh, number one, like there is some problem in the network, it will trigger different alarms and you know, uh, it can also help us in protection, uh, services protection, like from working to protection road. And after, let's suppose there is some uh, issue is fixed, then it will help us in restoration. So this uh, ONM also help us in like, you can, after services configuration, you can ping your tunnel uh, using your control plane or uh, data plane. And also you can use uh, that ONM to detect the delay. And you can also use link trace, like you can trace your link, where is the problem? Uh, it will identify. So this ping, trace and performance management are related to the ONM functionality of the uh, MPLSTP. Uh, and also MPLSTP usually we are using like uh, the client services mostly is layer two services. It is mapped into the MPLSTP, but uh, still we have uh, different equipment from different vendors. We can interoperate with IP MPLS also directly, okay? Okay, any other question? Any other question? Okay, let's take one more question. And then, uh, uh, so there's one more question in the chat and one more raised hand. Uh, okay, why MPLSTP is highly supportive technology to SDN? Uh, like here, you, you can see in MPLSTP control plane is isolated from forwarding plan. Uh, if let's suppose your control plan on NMS, uh, you are using uh, and it is detached. So still your network will work properly. Uh, in the SDN, there will be control, uh, centralized control plan, and there is a lot of interoperability to making it uh, complex, although uh, it is helping in different network scenario. So where there is mission critical services, there is highly uh, delay sensitive services and uh, very reliable services is required, then MPLSTP is suggested. Hello, Hassan, can you hear me? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Uh, okay, uh, Zishan for MPLSTP and MPLSTP P T E. Uh, this I will answer on the community. Okay, with detail. Okay. Hassan, do you have a question for us? Uh, yes, uh, my question was related to uh, the setting of LSR IDs. Okay. Uh, do we have to follow a specific uh, uh, IP pool to accomplish this, or uh, in the network design we can change it as per our will? Uh, for LSR ID, the guideline is like it should be, you know, uh, unique and it should not be some, uh, you can say, public IP like uh, broadcast IP or multicast IPs. Other than that, you can construct your network, uh, one particular network according to your uh, choice. But okay. the other can side. Network uh, have my, can the same LSR ID be reused in the network? We cannot uh, use like same LSR ID. We cannot reuse uh, because it will be, if you are configuring some tunnel services, so it will give some conflict and maybe okay. the services is not delivered to the right uh, node. Right LSP, right. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your questions. Uh, thank you for your answers. Uh, now we will continue with the forum Q&A session. Um, our host today has prepared three questions based on the content that was presented today. Uh, if you want to participate, again, I invite you all to uh, go to the link I just shared again and answer the questions there, okay? So please don't answer him in the, uh, here in the chat, answer in the community, because in order to be able to see your uh, nickname, you need to answer in the community, okay? So I invite you all to uh, answer the questions in the community uh, if you want to participate in our activity for today. 
Uh, I will also add the questions in the post uh, after we finish the live session. Uh, now it's just a preview of the questions, so you uh, are familiar with them. I will also hide the comments so that uh, you can, the other users cannot see your answers. And um, let's those, let's present the, the question, the three questions. This is the first question: true or false? Okay. So uh, you... First question. Uh, yeah. This is question from you. Like uh, uh, this is true and false, and you can answer on the community. Yes. Uh, I, I believe no need to answer here. Yes. Uh, Just in the can... mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like LSR ID and any communication IP can be same subnet, whether it is true or false. So you can answer uh, as per your understanding on the community. Uh, second question is single choice. What are the network protection type of the MPLSTP? How many types support it? So we have different options and you can choose uh, for uh, your answer. Okay, this is the second question. This is from you. Uh, and we have a third question, which is multiple choice. You can select more than one. So what are the uh, services type supported by Huawei Optics PTN? You can answer for this on the community. And it was a very good session from all of you. I observe a lot of good questions from you. Uh, so it will be a good interaction on the community. You can join this Huawei forum. Uh, if someone don't have the user ID, uh, you can simply register on the Huawei forum. Uh, and you can log in and you can open this link. Uh, there will be, of course, uh, more activities coming and we have also some recorded activities if there is some question related to this topic we will answer if there is some other question related to any of huawei related products you can ask question on community uh, and we will ensure to uh, answer it in a right way okay and thank you everyone for participation yes uh, it's exactly what i want, what i wanted to say if you have any questions please Use the community uh, to share your questions there. If you don't have an account yet, please register. And uh, I want to thank you again, uh, Dost, for uh, hosting today. I think it was a great session. Thank you all for uh, your questions. You made the session more interactive and that's uh, exactly the point of this uh, webinars. And of course, uh, if you will have the av availability and time uh, maybe we can have a second session uh, of this topic because like one of our uh, community members said, uh, this is a dense topic. Uh, there are many details that need to be covered. So I'm sure that we could uh, arrange uh, at least one more webinar because there are many things to discuss on this topic. So thank you all for today. Uh, thank you for participating in our live webinar. Uh, of course, we are planning more uh, sessions, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, every month we'll have new topics um, for you. And have a great day, uh, evening ahead, based on uh, your location. Thank you all for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. And uh, see you soon. Bye, everyone. Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you.